My God is good. And all the time. I said, my God is good. And all the time. Now, do y'all really believe that, though? I, I, ho I hope you do. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited anytime I get to step out, especially in the days we're living in, and be amongst my fellow Christian people. I know we're not perfect, as Charlotte said, and Charlotte doesn't know what my lesson is called today or what it's about, but what she spoke is going to go into what we're going into today. So thank you, Charlotte, for being obedient and let God use you. I know you were just supposed to get up here and pray, but God told you to say that instead. Well, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So this is what I want to do. I want to set something up for you today as I speak. Uh, but I want you to say something real quick. Say, I am beautiful, I am beautiful. and wonderfully made. And wonderfully made. Okay, that was kind of good because it was kind of monk. I am beautiful. It would sound like a monk church or something. Let's say that one more time with a little bit more enthusiasm. I am beautiful, I am beautiful. and wonderfully made. made. You almost got it. You almost got it. I am beautiful, I am beautiful. and wonderfully made. We're almost there. One more inch here. One more inch here. I am beautiful and wonderfully made. And God did that. So let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. God did that. He made you beautiful and wonderful. He did that for you. You know, it's, it's interesting the season that we're in right now, not just in this country, but around the world, but specifically right now. And I'll explain. You know, we just came out of the Halloween season. And this is funny because God gave me this sermon that I'm going to share with you today uh, several weeks ago, uh, uh, and I wasn't even thinking of the timing that he was going to use it until I started studying for it this week and said, oh, my goodness, God set me up like he always does, and, and, I, and I love it. I love it. But let's talk about Halloween for a second, and this is not to bash Halloween or anything like that or to get on to anybody for celebrating it or nothing like that. It's just this is what God gave me for this season. See, because a lot of times what we do as a culture, especially in America, we take things and we run with trends and we create uh, trends without even doing the investigation, without even understanding what's underneath it. So my thing is, I don't care what you do as long as I know you know what you're doing. And see, this is what God wants us to know. He wants to, do you know what you're doing? Do you know who you are? And that's what I really want to get into today. But let's set up the Halloween. If you think about it, Halloween was kind of created a little over what was it, 2,000 years ago with the, with the Irish people and uh, the Scottish people. And they had this holiday that they celebrate called Samhain or Samhain, however you want to pronounce it, Samhain or Samhain. And what it was is they had a calendar, and it wasn't like four seasons like ours, winter, summer, spring, and fall. It was more of a hot season, a cold season, a light season, and a dark season. That's how they did their calendar. Well, in between that calendar, on their calendar, October 31st was the end of their year. And that was the transition time. That was the middle time in transitioning from this hot, this good, whatever you want to call it, into the dark, the cold, whatever. In between that, the reason they celebrated this thing called Samhain is because they knew that there was a time that in the transition, there would be sensitivity in the spirit realm. Follow me. Follow me. In the spirit realm. So maybe they did little things a little strange. Because what they did is they would bake certain foods and they would have these big bonfires uh, 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 to welcome some of the spirits and to shoo away other spirits. I need y'all to pay attention because we celebrate this thing and I want you to know why we celebrate it or why it has been celebrated. Now what they would do, the reason they would put on some of them costumes or masks is to shield themselves from what they would call vengeful spirits. Anything they thought was wicked and would try to harm them. So this is why they wore masks to, to cover themselves, to conceal themselves. So that's what they did. But then the Roman Catholic Church came in and started doing what they do. And they said, wait, y'all celebrate what? That's weird. That is a pagan thing that you guys are doing. So how about this? And, 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 and we're not going to really erase that, but we'll replace that. So they created something called the Hollow's Eve. And the hollow, hollow meant saint. Hollows Eve, and so what they would do is they would take the 31st, November 1st, and November 2nd, and what they would do was they would celebrate, uh, uh, but they would do it differently. And they would still recognize spirits, but no, let's not do any of that, what they would call pagan stuff, all right? So then later on, years later, I'm fast-forwarding, when we moved towards America, and they started, you know, immigrants from Scotland and, and, and I Ireland come over, they bring some of their traditions, when this first started happening in America, it was strange because they would dress up and go to people's house and people were like, what the heck is going on? Did you know that Halloween 
became Halloween because instead of Hallow's Eve, it was Halloween. You guys following? So what happened is it didn't really get commercialized in America until like the 1950s and 60s because there was a group of kids who caught on and did it in Philadelphia. They raised enough money for a children's organization that it made national news. And so now everybody's like, hey, this is a cool thing. Let's celebrate Halloween. Again, as I'm telling you this story, I'm not bashing anyone. I'm not discouraging anyone. I'm telling you that we need to learn to study what it is that we're doing or we're participating in. And I'm not going to preach this, preach this hell and brimstone like if you celebrate Halloween, you're going to hell. I just want you to know what's going on. So what we've started to do in America is we celebrate Halloween. We dressed up as ghosts and goblins or whatever. whatever. However, the holiday has transitioned into the American culture. It's still somewhat a celebration of uh, the spirit realm. So my wife and I, not to tell on her, but this just to kind of show you where this goes. I was brought up kind of celebrating Halloween, but then when I got in church, realized that, oh, maybe I shouldn't be celebrating Halloween. So then when my wife and I got together, neither one of us are in church, and she wants to celebrate Halloween because that's how she grew up. It was a big deal. And I'm like, no, my kids are not doing Halloween. So, Why? Why? We always do Halloween. Nope, we're not doing Halloween. Go, Why? So we would have this argument every year. Finally, we came to a compromise. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. The kids can go out and do trick-or-treating as long as they're not dressed up as witches and goblins and ghosts. Why? Because I started to realize even at a young age that there were certain doors being opened if, if, if we celebrate. So if she said, how about if they're an angel? And I remember one, one time I wasn't going to buy a costume for my kids. They got really creative. Uh, Mike put on some old shoes, some men's shoes, and got his face all dirty and created a sign, we'll work for, for candy. And they just got creative. And one was an angel. And so I was like, okay. You know, we can find some middle ground, but I have a problem with it. I remember there was a time as a kid that I was traumatized by when people were putting razor blades in apples. Anybody remember that? So I'm like, why would somebody do something so evil and so wicked? So that kind of ruined it for me. I don't want no apples or no candy. I don't know what these people are doing to this candy. (laughs) I I set that all up just to kind of tell you, just as a culture, it doesn't matter if it's Easter, because, see, we've ruined that thing almost. Christmas, we kind of messed that thing up. We don't realize what we are really celebrating. Some of us will get mad, and and don't do this, people. Don't go out and ever tell somebody Santa Claus ain't real. Kids, if you're watching, sorry. Uh, But if you really study who Santa Claus, St. Nick, was supposed to be, if you study the history of how it evolved, you'll realize that it didn't come from a good place. So then I was like, we're not celebrating no Santa Claus in my house. Why not? You know, we we would always have these things, but I didn't want to be over-religious. I just wanted to kind of understand. I know I've done my research. I think I was a weird kid because I always wanted to know why something was done, but I would do research. I wasn't like my wife. If her mom told her to do something, she said, why? And I'm like, oh, your mom's going to kill you because I don't say why to my mom. or or I don't say why to nobody. I just say, okay. I don't agree, but okay. You don't say why. Just do it. (laughs) But I always did research, and this is what God has put on my heart today that It's just the season we're in, but no matter what it is that is going on in the world, do your research. How about this? Let me switch it over. If you haven't voted already, vote, 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 vote. And let me also challenge you to do your research on what you're about to vote on or who you're about to vote for. That's all I'm going to say on that because that's not what I'm preaching about today. (laughs) And so what I want to do is give you this first scripture of the day. And before I get into the title of my lesson, but, but this scripture is going to give us a bridge, okay? And it's 1 John 3, 1, and this is the English Standard Version. I set up that Halloween thing, and now I'm going to give you a bridge to cross over into my sermon, okay? 1 John 3, 1 says this, See what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Hey, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You are a child of God. I am a child of God. That makes us children of God. Let me start that one more time before I finish the scripture. It says, see what kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children in God. And I love this part. And so we are. It didn't say so we might be. It says so we are. If you consider yourself a child of God, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a child of God. Guess what? Those who don't even receive him have become children of God, but they just have to make a choice. God is a gentleman. He does not force his will on him. This is why we should say, Lord, thy will be done and not mine. (laughs) But he will not force himself upon you. Amen? He is a gentleman. Amen? Let me finish reading that. 
the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. The reason the world doesn't know him is because a lot of times the world doesn't know us. And the reason the world doesn't know us is because a lot of times we don't even know us. <laughs> Follow me this morning. We don't even know us. You know why? Because a lot of times we're putting up a front. Now, 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 now let me explain this to you. Uh, I don't know if you know what the number one uh, thing that the world is consuming right now. Uh, if you follow uh, the information or in anything, you try to do some research right now. The number one top thing uh, that we're consuming right now or the most expensive, most valuable thing right now that people are paying money for is your information. Yeah. See, this is how the social media works. If I know where you shop, who you hang out with the most, where y'all go out to eat, and I can track that, I know how to target you. If I can know how you vote or, or, or if you go to the strip club, although you don't want nobody else to know you go there. If I can follow this and track you, I know how to sell you stuff, okay? Your information is so valuable right now. This is why the, the social media is, is, is the gods right now to some people because of the information they have. It's not my God, and hopefully it's not your God, but to a lot of people, social media is the God because it has your information. Have you ever done this? Have you ever Googled something, trying to find something, and then you go to your Facebook or your Instagram and boom, you pull it up and hey, there's an ad that says, hey, you want this? You, need, you were looking at gutter cleaning, here, buy this. Replace your gutters. You know, that kind of thing's happening, it's like, whoa. Me and my wife were talking one time and we didn't Google nothing, but we picked up our Facebook and says, she said, oh my God, I just, we were just talking about this. I said, yeah, you got that, I got that too. This is powerful, okay? And it's the most valuable commodity right now, but let me, let, me, let me submit something else to you. The top thing that the world is consuming right now and really all the time is fear. Fear. If I can get you to fear something, I can sell you something. If I can get up here and tell you that the world's going to end tomorrow and I can convince you good enough and then I can get your information so I can track where you are so I can send you a message. Don't forget the world's ended tomorrow. Oh, don't forget the world's ended tomorrow. If I can do that enough, you say, well, the world really is going to end tomorrow. So now I can sell you something. I got these bunkers for sale that I built out of storage sheds and we put them underground. If you want to be a doom prepper, I got you covered, but you got to buy it from me because the world's going to end tomorrow. If I'm smart enough to twist that and do that, I can do that. Okay, so but let me let me say this because a lot of us or a lot of the world is living in fear and we don't know who we are and we don't know who God is. It causes us to do something. It causes us to put up a front or a facade. And, and before I give you the title today, uh, I want to show you something. Does anybody any of you ladies know what this is? I borrowed this from my wife. Anybody? It's a travel makeup bag. There you go. There you go. It's a makeup bag. I'm intentional with this because I got something in this makeup bag because most of us have a makeup bag. I'm a man. I don't have no makeup bag. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so today's title is called Masquerade because a lot of us are living a front. A lot of us are living in a masquerade. The world and our culture teaches us to be someone you're not. And so a lot of times we're being exactly who the world wants us to be or our demons want us to be without really being who God created us to be. Masquerade. Somebody say that. Say masquerade. Now, before we get too far gone, let's look at the definition of this word. See, I have my makeup bag because a lot of us, we get somewhere and we're one way in the car. But when we get somewhere, like, we got to walk into this church, y'all. Come on now. Oh, hello there, saints. Hello there, man of God, woman of God. Hello there. So we all got our makeup bags. Don't front, okay? But, but, but let's, let's look at the word. Let's look at the word masquerade. The definition says this. A party, dance, or other festive gathering of persons wearing a what? Say it with me. Masks and other disguises and often elegant historical or fantastic costumes. May I submit to you that a lot of us, when we go to work, we know we have to go in with a mask. 
we have to front for our bosses. Oh, I love my boss. You know, I hate my boss. It's good. You know, that make me mad. <laughs> oh, they get on my nerves. And some of us say, oh, here comes that one lady. She always comes. She always want to talk to me. She come and do it. <laughs> some of us, when we go to work or we go certain places, we have to put on a mask. Some of us, we're trying to be all tough, big and bad when inside we're soft as jello. <laughs> some of us are trying to act like we care and we really don't care. You know, we are living in a culture, it's a masquerade. If you look at that definition, it says a party or a dance, guess what? Every day is a party. It's a dance full of people who have on masks. We are living in a masquerade right now. Our culture teaches us to do so. And I got this mask and I was thinking, man, what if I got up here and preached the whole thing? What if I showed up everywhere I went with this on? They're like, what is wrong with this dude? <laughs> he, he got issues. Oh, he probably special or something. Don't, don't, don't. No. Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is a lot of us, this is what we do. We wear a mask. Because the truth is, I don't really want you to see my flaws. Let's just be honest. I, 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 I like to dress up and look nice. I have my fine threads. But tomorrow I'll probably have on a big old straw hat pushing a lawnmower. And then sometimes I'm just in a hoodie. But no matter where I'm at on this platform or not, I am who I am. Amen. And what that means is I try every day to be who God created me to be. Amen. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Because I am who I am. I remember when Moses went to God and he was like, well, who should I tell him sent me? He said, tell him the great I am sent him. So if I am representing the great I am, I guess I'm just the little I am, but I am who I am. Okay, we should not be living in a now. I'm not knocking masquerades because my wife and I, every once in a while, we like to have a big costume party. One year, you remember that, Diane? Diane came with a big old huge afro, and she dressed up like Flo, the insurance lady from Progressive. I was like Cato from the Green Hornet. You know, my, one of my uncles came as the Green Lantern. And, I mean, we just had a good time. That, nothing's wrong with having fun. I'm not talking about a costume party. I'm talking about real life. Too many of us are faking the funk. Too many of us are wearing a facade. Too many of us are not being real. You know why? Because we don't know who we are. And if you don't know who you are, how can you sell somebody this version of yourself that's not real? And then on top of that, how can you sell them the God in you if you never let him out because you're too busy covering it up with a mask? Hello, I'm talking to somebody today. I got my makeup bag and my mask. If you want me to throw that on, if that makes it more appealing. But I really want you to see the real me. I want you to see the real me. Now, let me give you another definition today and another word. Imposter. Woo. Because see... Most of the time in the masquerade, there's a lot of imposters. Let's look at that. A person who practices deception under an assumed character, identity, or name. Let that marinate for just a second. A person who practices, it doesn't say does it every once in a while. That means practice means you're doing it a lot. You're practicing deception under an assumed name or identity. Excuse me. So, so let me give you an example of my stage name when I do music. It used to be Mad Judge, but I changed it. First of all, let me tell you the evolution of how it happened, of how I got to where I am today. Mad Judge back in the day meant I was like a mad scientist. My nickname was the judge because I was always the leader kind of thing. I'm the boss in this courtroom. So, so they, I went by the judge, and then I went by Mad Judge because it was like he's mad on the lyrics. I'll give you an example. One time we had this show. It was a contest, and the contest was to show uh, whoever won this contest would win money, and they would get to open up for a big-name group coming to town. So we did this contest, and at the time I had me, I had a hype man, I had a DJ, and I had some dancers. We had the whole stage presentation. We showed up, we showed out, did the thing, and then they come down and said, it's down, and they let the crowd judge. For this group, for this group, for us, ah, for this other group, ah, and it's all, oh, we got a tie, we got to have a tiebreaker. And uh, one of the groups that was, you know, competing with us said, oh, that's because they got all them dancers and doing all them dances and tricks and stuff. And all that was like a showmanship that he, I bet you he couldn't bust out a rhyme, a good rhyme if we was to have a battle. And my crew was like, oh, y'all think he can't? Don't let the dancing fool you. Don't let his dance moves fool you. And I was like, yeah, they pumped me all up. And I was like, let's battle. I guess y'all forgot. So we had a battle. Guess who won? Moi. I still have the trophy today. 
moi. Okay, so hence my name, the mad judge. Boy, that boy, mad, like a mad scientist with the rhymes. That was the thing. But then when God began to move in my life, and I'm no longer doing secular music, it's like I, I, God did a great intervention with my life and said, if you'll finally do what I've asked you to do with the gift I've given you, we're going to go some places. And I finally had to trust him in being who he wanted me to be. And then when I'm transferring over, I was like, do I change my name? Because that doesn't sound good to be going to church and they call you, say, mad judge <laughs> in a church. <laughs> And God said, don't change your name. I'm like, what? Uh, what are these religious people going to think when they say, wait, a Christian group is coming and they name Raw Dog and Mad Judge? That don't sound like no church music. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, but God told me not to change my name. So maybe I should change my name to Holy Judge or uh, the, the Great Saint Judge. Or maybe something real religious. And he said, no. He said, no, because he knew that we would be reaching people we would be reaching people that were not necessarily saved, but just coming to church because they had to. <laughs> I, I, I'm, come, I'm going through an evolution for you because, you know, that's what I called myself, but that's not the name God gave me. Okay. Eventually, I come to a point where about four years ago, my wife said, you know, you need to change your name. I said, I know. She said, because that's not who you are anymore. Even though your music is, you're evolving and it's not who you are. And I knew she was right, but I was like, I don't know how to do this. I've been having that name for so long. And the truth of the matter is I still have a catalog under that name. And I don't mind collecting royalties for it. So that's a part of who I was in my history. Amen. When I finally changed my name, it had to be a God thing. So now my name is Ro Tunes. That's my stage name. Ro is the nickname that people call me short for Roman. Tunes is I love music. I grew up in a family that loved music family of musicians, and so tunes is what I love to make. My name is Ro, so Ro Tunes, in case you never knew that. So I had to come to an evolution, and I'm going somewhere with that today, okay? It's not just about me. I am taking you somewhere today because some of us need to get to a place where we're ready to let go, as Charlotte said earlier, let go of the old so that God can bring us into the new so that we can be who he's truly trying to make us. And I'm telling you, although the world is a big masquerade, it's time for some of you to take off your mask. And no, I'm not talking about the mask you're supposed to be wearing to protect you and others from the virus. Don't take that mask off if you go into places and they tell you to wear it. Amen? That's not what I'm talking about today. So no one confused that. I'm going to take that away right now because the enemy is a lie. For anyone that said, the pastor said we don't have to wear our mask. That's not the mask I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about that front of the person that you're trying to be that you're truly not. Amen. Let me give you another word, and I don't have it on the screen. It's called imposter syndrome. And here's the thing about imposter syndrome. What happens is when you start gaining success in being someone that you're really not, you feel like you don't belong. You feel like you don't need it. When God begins to bless you and give you things, you feel like, I don't deserve this. And, and, and so what God wants to do today is he wants to take away that imposter syndrome so when he blesses you, you can say, yeah, I deserve this blessing. Not because I'm better than anybody else or that I'm arrogant. I deserve this blessing because I've been obedient. I've been praying. I've been tithing. I've been loving. I've been just doing what God tells me to do even when it's uncomfortable. So, yes, when he blesses me, I'm going to receive it instead of saying, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is something I had to struggle with for years until my, our, our former pastor, the man who helped build this house, until he told me, you know, that's a part of being prideful when you want to accept gifts from people. It's like, ooh, ouch. And he said, the reason I can tell you that is because I struggle with that too. And whenever you want to accept a gift from someone, it's a form of pride. I was like, that's real because I guess that is like, no, 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 I don't need your money. I don't need your help. I, now I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Because God has sent you to know what I need in this time. And maybe you didn't know what I need. You're just being obedient. Thank you. And sometimes it's something I didn't know I needed. Thank you. I'll accept that. Amen. So masquerade and imposter. Now I want to talk to you about Jacob. Because this is important. Because Jacob is the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. But if you think about Abraham for a minute, I want to show you an evolution here. Abraham's original name was Abram. It wasn't Abraham. But because of what God was doing in his life, his name changed. But I want to talk about Abraham's grandson, Jacob. See, when Jacob was born to his father Isaac, he was born with a twin named Esau. But as they were coming out, uh, Jacob grabbed the heel of his brother Esau, and so heel, Jacob, and also means deceiver, 
Jacob, so he was known as the deceiver. Guess what Jacob became as he's growing up, even as a young boy? A deceiver. He deceived his brother, tricked his father, had his mother's help, playing tricks and schemes and all of this stuff. That's what he became. This is why it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, that you know what you're naming your kids. But even with that, even if you mess it up, even if you mess it up, God has a way of redeeming them because he knows. He knows how he created them and what he created them for. And a lot of times we try to live up to what people call us. Hello. Sometimes we try to live up to what people call us instead of living up to what God has called us. Uh Uh-oh, I'm going somewhere this morning. Anyway, Jacob deceived to a point so much that he had to leave. He had to flee his home. He had to flee his parents and his family because his brother wanted to kill him. And I don't blame him because he was such a trickster, a deceiver. But as life goes on and he begins to have his own family and he begins to get deceived by his uncle, Laban, man, he really finds out what a trickster is. But he decides somewhere along the line because of his encounters with God that that's not who he wanted to be. But he didn't really understand the transition that was happening. So when it gets to a point where he's sick and tired of being sick and tired and he needs a new life and he will face it no matter the consequences, he decides he's going to go back home, back to the land from which he came, which means he's going to have to now confront the brother who he deceived. But I want to talk to you about a transition that happened before he met his brother. Just like I'm talking to you, or I brought up the whole thing about Samhain, the the Irish and Scottish holiday that they celebrate between the seasons because they knew there was going to be a spiritual uh, uh, awakening of some sort, good and bad. So one day when Jacob is preparing to cross over into this land, he sends his family over, his stock, his servants, all of that, and he's by himself in the night. It says an angel or a man or a force of God came along, and Jacob began to wrestle. And they begin to wrestle so long that daybreak is coming because this is happening overnight and now daybreak in this show. Now, what I want to show you is in Genesis 32, 27, something that happens, it says, I'm just going to read these three scriptures because I want you to see the transition. It says, what is your name, the man asked, or the angel or the force of God, whatever you want to call it? He replied, Jacob. And then it says, your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and men and have won. Doesn't mean he beat God. It just means that God has given him victory. Listen, please tell me your name, Jacob said. Jacob's still trying to find out who is this I'm wrestling with. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Something happened here while he's wrestling. In fact, Jacob even walked away with a limp because in in this battle, as it was getting intense, it says the man, the force of God, the angel, touched him and put a wrench in his hip and he never walked the same. Not only did he not walk the same, he had a new name. Because, see, God had promised his grandfather and his father that they would uh, make many nations. And when Jacob was changed to Israel, guess what? There's a nation right now today on this planet called Israel. Guess who it comes from or named after? The Jacob that became the Israel. Because he stopped wearing the mask of the trickster, if you will, the deceiver, the heel grabber, and became the man who was going to build a nation of God, a godly nation. Are you hearing me this morning? He stopped playing along with the masquerade and decided he was going to be who he was going to be. It's funny as my, my, my daughters are picking costumes, like all of my grandkids were, were like either superheroes or, or cows and animals and stuff like that. And I said, guess what I'm going to be this year? They said, what? I said, I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> I've walked into parties before and they said, well, who are you supposed to be? I said, me. <laughs> I'm going to be who God created me to be. And I'm trying to encourage you today to make a decision as you leave here today that, you know what? I'm going to stop playing these games and I'm going to be who I am. Okay, because really what happens is when you start to be who God created you to be, you will finally see the success that you've been praying for, that you've been asking for. If you haven't been seeing it, it's because God said, I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm giving this to. 
I mean, I'm not going to let you go without. He's a merciful God. He's a graceful God. He will see us through our, our ignorance and our, and, our, and, our, and, our, and our mistakes. He will see us through that. He will carry us through that. But he's like, I don't, I don't know who you are. This belongs to that person, not that person. I don't know who this is. That's not who God created you to be. Amen. He didn't create you to wear a mask. Amen. He created you to be who he created you to be, flaws and all. I remember when I was a kid, I used to have these insecurities because of what somebody else told me. Like, I remember the girls would say, you got some big old lips. I'd be like, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Is that, your lips is big. I'm like, is, so does that mean I'm, I don't know what that means. And so then I started getting insecure about my lips and I'd be like, I wonder if I put my lips in like that. <laughs> then I found out that Michael Jackson didn't like his nose, so he got a nose job. I was like, well, I wonder if I can get a lip job <laughs> and a cheek job. And my legs are too skinny. I wonder if I can put some meat on them, get them, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm joking, but today in today's world, if you really want to get that stuff done, you can. <laughs> There's a lot of plastic surgery going on, Botox in the lips. I, I used to complain about my big lips. Now everybody wants big lips. <laughs> I'm like, I guess I'm in style now. <laughs> but I didn't change my appearance. I am who I am. Okay, good, bad, ugly, skinny chicken legs or not. This is who I am. My wife likes it, so that's all that matters. <laughs> I am who I am. <laughs> so I really want us to get into a spirit of, I'm going to give you another definition. I don't have this up on the screen, but uh, we need to, it's a time has come for us to unmask. Again, I'm not talking about this mask that we're supposed to be wearing to protect ourselves and others from the virus. Not that mask. I'm talking about the front you've been putting up. I'm speaking to somebody online and somebody in this building right now. You've been wearing a mask and you finally, it's finally being revealed and unveiled to you today that, you know what, no wonder I'm getting nowhere. I'm trying to please everybody on my job. I'm trying to please everybody in my church and please everybody in my neighborhood. And that's not who I am. Now, here's the thing. Once we unmask, even if you're ugly under that mask, you can finally start to deal with it. Come on now. I, and I'm not talking about ugly from appearances. I'm talking about your spirit, your soul. Okay? Some of the ugliest people I've met in the world are some of the most beautiful people in the world. Yeah? I know that doesn't sound good to say, but I'm just going to put it out there because some people think that they can judge by appearances. And God doesn't judge and look at us that way. He doesn't care if you're on Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers and all that. He doesn't care if you're in, the, you know, working those abs, fellas, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> he don't care about your outer appearance, okay? He cares about what's on the inside, amen? amen. So it's time for us to unmask children of God. Let me read the definition of unmask. It's a verb. I don't have it on the screen, okay? Expose the true character of. Or hidden truth about. Amen. Let me say that again. To unmask means to expose the true character of or hidden truth about. A lot of us don't let God be who he's supposed to be within us. You were all created to be a unique individual. That's why no two fingerprints in the whole entire earth will ever match up. Because it doesn't matter how many millions of people or billion people have been through this planet before the Lord comes. He created you for a specific and unique purpose. And the only way you're ever going to fulfill that is if you will truly allow him to shine within you. Amen? The only way you're going to be the true version of who God created you to be is to allow Christ to shine through you. As my wife said today, the scripture that... I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, yes, I may be limited as a human being, but with Christ, I am not limited. Surely maybe I can't fly if by flapping my arms and hands, but I can get on an airplane and fly. I wish I could fly to Mexico. Guess what? You can. It may not be in the form you would like because you got to buy a ticket and all that stuff. But you can still fly. Amen? You can still fly. Now, if I take you to a scripture I shared with you last week, Galatians 2.20, because this is so important. This is Paul. It's so important when he writes this Galatians 2.20. This is the New Living Translation. It says, my old self has been crucified. Is that not up there? If not, okay, don't worry about it. I'll read it. Don't worry about it. 
My old self has been crucified with Christ. You guys pull this up or make a note of it. Galatians 2.20. Because this is how we should live. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body. That's how we should see it. Living in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus died for you and me. And he knew that he had to die. He knew that he had to die so that his spirit would be multiplied and that whoever wanted it could have it. And once you let the Holy Spirit inhabit you, you become the true you. You start to not worry about your flaws anymore as far as I don't like my ears. I don't like my nose. I don't like my eye. My face is too small. This is my head's too big. None of that matters because then you start to feel that within you. You're like, you know, it doesn't matter. I have God in me. I have Christ in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Somebody say, I can do all things things. through Christ Christ. who strengthens me. me. Now, y'all were monotone. That's why I got caught up, choked up. Let's do it one more time. I can do all things things. through Christ Christ. who strengthens me. There it is. That's the spirit. Come on. You got to say it like you mean. I can do all things. No, you can't. Yes, I can. How? Through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care what you say. There are going to be people that say, you, you, you shouldn't be able to do that. You know, I'll, be, I'll, I'll admit I had imposter syndrome for, for a while. And I think I finally realized it this week. Because I was like, I don't know why God made me a pastor. I don't know why he put me to up to lead people. And my wife needs to ask, why don't people listen to you? I don't know. I don't know. But then I realized, yes, I do know. This is what God had on my life. This is the purpose for my life, and I'm going to live it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to receive it. I'm going to give it. I'm going to be who God created me to be. But guess what? It's time for you, too, to be who God created you to be. Man, if I'm going to be who God created me to be, and you're going to be who God created you to be, oh, my goodness, what could we do when we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Man, if that's all of us saying that, Whoa, we can knock down walls, move mountains, go, run through steel. We could do mighty things. We could heal. This is, oh, my goodness. This is why I believe that if we continue to pray and believe that the people we love and receive won't get sick, Amen. This, this is why some people think, um, I, I decided I'm not going to open the church until God tells me to. I don't care if every church in town opens. I will open the church when God tells me to, and I did. Because I felt like I don't want to be responsible for anybody getting sick. I don't want to be like one of those pastors up north who said, y'all come on in here and scream and shout and let's bring hundreds of people in. I don't want to do that. I want to do what God tells me to do, though. And I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm not basing my, my church off of anyone else or my decisions. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to be the true version of who he created me to be. Amen? But so should you. That's why if some decide, hey, I got to stay home, stay home. Do what God tells you to do. But if he tells you to come, come. But do what God tells you to do. When you walk into a restaurant or go to a place and they say you got to have a mask, Christians, don't act a fool. I ain't wearing no mask. What if I ain't getting my money if I got to put on a mask? It's ridiculous. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. It's free country. That's ridiculous. Just do it. Just do it or don't spend your money there. Go somewhere else. But don't. Get an attitude about it because that's not who Christ created us to be. Or God has not created us to be that way. And if Christ is in us, Christ is not going to act like that. Hello? Hello? Come on. It's time to unmask and it's time to, let me read this Galatians 2.20 again. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live. That means my flesh doesn't live. My attitude, my decisions don't live. But Christ lives within me. So I live in this earthly body, which is just a shell, but I trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is why when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creation. Does this mean you're not going to make some of the same mistakes? It's a process. Now, there are miracles that happen when people change and they're like, I stop smoking, I stop drinking, I stop cussing, I stop doing this and that. All at once, God does this and he will do a drastic and dramatic change in certain people's lives. But for most of us, sometimes we just got to walk that thing out. 
Like, nope, you created this mess. You're going to have to walk it out. You, this, is, this is your doing, and I'm going to have grace and mercy on you. I'm going to give you exit ramps, and I'm going to give you open doors and open windows to go through, but you got to walk this thing out. And so what I am saying to you today is that as some of us begin to walk out and, and out of these things that we've created in our lives, take off your mask. Which mask am I talking about? I'm talking about this one we're wearing in this masquerade, trying to be somebody that God did not create us to be. But being who God created us to be. The full thing. Amen. Let me read another scripture for you. And this is out of 1 John 5, 12. Uh, and it says this. This is the New Living Translation. Whoever has the Son, S-O-N, not S-U-N, but whoever has the Son has life. Oh, I love this. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want life. You should want life. I don't want to just exist anymore. I want to live this is why so many people are going crazy, like, I'm sick of this virus, I'm sick of this pandemic, I'm sick of it. I just want to live my life. You can still live your life by knowing who you are in Christ, by taking off your mask. Some of us have had to take off our mask because a lot of women don't wear makeup anymore because they're like, hey, I'm working from home, I got to run this errand, I don't care about wearing all this makeup and all this, you know, it's okay. Most of you look so beautiful without makeup, okay? You are beautiful and wonderfully made just the way you are. Pimples and blemishes and all. It doesn't matter. God loves you, and that's all that should matter. I'm going to read it one more time. Whoever has the Son, we're talking about Jesus Christ, has life. Whoever does not have God's son does not have life. A lot of people are not living. They're just existing because they don't allow themselves to be seen, the real them, because they're too busy living in the party, the dance of the masquerade. I have this quote I want to end with. And it's, uh, God gave it to me. And, 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 I, and I truly believe this. It says this. Knowing the true power you possess on the inside, notice it says, through Christ, is a game changer. Amen. This is what I mean by a game changer. Once you know who you are in Christ, it's a wrap. You know what I mean by it's a wrap? There's nothing you can't do. You, you, you become who God created you to be with confidence. It's a game changer because you're no, one, no longer listening to what people tell you you can't do and who you're not. And you just step into the things that you don't know. Oh, I can't? Watch me. Oh, I'm not? Watch me. Oh, you don't think I can? Watch me. You're going to go over there and, and pray over that person and expect healing? Watch me. I have the power of Christ within me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Watch me. Y'all going to have church and not wear a mask? Watch me. But it's not in defiance of the law or in defiance of just showing how, how, how rude and, and, and arrogant I can be. If God tells us to pray and protect one another, and if we're smart enough, Sierra's not here today because we made a choice, all of us. Well, maybe it's just a good idea to stay home, just in case. I'm covered, but we're not going to be silly, okay? If I'm sick, I'm calling Kenny, say, hey, man, I ain't feeling too good, and just in case, I need you to preach tomorrow. Uh, Charlotte or Stephanie, you're going to have to go in there. No, you stay home with me because you've been in my house. But, but you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's be smart about it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm saying. We're not walking in this place, hopefully, being ignorant. We're walking in this place. If I'm sick, I'm going to stay home, and I expect you to do the same thing, okay? You're still covered, okay? But just because we're covered doesn't mean we can be arrogant enough to think this thing can't touch us. It can touch you, all right? It can touch you. But now we're in a season where everybody is still, they're having those normal uh, viruses and things that happens. But you know what the first thing they think? Uh-oh, may, maybe I got that raging Rona. Huh. I hope I don't got Rona. <laughs> oh, you don't have Rona, do you? <laughs> oh, I'm running a slight fever. Oh, don't, do you got that Rona? <laughs> Let's not speak that over people. It's like, no, in the name of Jesus, no, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. You are healed. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, right now, with the authority invested in me, I claim that everybody in this place is healed and covered in the blood of Jesus. Protection, healing, walk in it, grab it, take off your mask, receive it. Amen? Receive it. Amen? Receive it. Will you stand with me? 
Hallelujah. I serve an awesome God and so do you. If we're coming here and we're on the same page, we should be serving the same God. <laughs> and if God is good all the time and all the time God is good, we should be talking about the same God. That means that even when things are not going so great, God is still God. Hello? God is still God. Doesn't matter what it looks like. And I know sometimes I have my ups and downs, my good days and my bad days. But God is still God. Amen. Amen. No longer, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to leave here today. And this is my prayer. That you leave here today and that you don't feel like you have to step into places and be like this. Okay? My prayer is that there's an unveiling and a revealing today that you decide, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to be who I am. Now, let me make something clear before we close. This doesn't mean you're going to be who you are as that you walk in a place. Well, that's just who I am. I say what's on my mind. No, if you take off your mask, now you can see the ugly and you can start to work on the things that are bringing you down. You can say, you know what? This is what I've never been. I got a mouth on me. I need to be careful about what I say and when I say it. But I'm still going to do what God tells me to do. And if God tells me to say it, I'm going to say it. Some of us, it's not about even what we say. It's our approach. And sometimes God's like, hey, 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 easy, easy now. <laughs> do what you got to do. Say what you're about to say. But hold on, hold on. Because the way what you're about to say is going to impact somebody's life, good or bad. Amen. But if God told you to do it, it's supposed to be good, but we can mess that thing up too. <laughs> Take off your mask. Unmask. Reveal the true character. The true character of who you are. And who you are is whoever God created you to be if you allow Jesus Christ to live within you. Amen? I'm hoping that I have saints in this place to decide I want Christ to shine through me no matter my ugliness. <laughs> no matter my blemishes, no matter my flaws, I want Christ to be seen in me. That when people see me, they don't necessarily see me, they see the Christ in me. And that if I'm being obedient and lining up, they'll see it all. They'll see me, but they'll see the Christ in me. They'll see that if I'm flawed and make mistakes, they'll know. But I can see that Christ in her. I can see that Christ in him. Amen. Amen. So I want to close in prayer today. And I want to pray this. If you'll bow your heads with me, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today that no matter what's going on in the world, we could be who you created and designed us to be. And that because you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for us, but not just to die, to defeat hell, defeat death, and rise up and, and, and sit at your right hand. Send us the Holy Spirit so that it could dwell within us and we could be exactly who you created us to be. And because of that, we could heal the sick and, and, and we can and, and do all these things that you have called us to do. If we just trust in you, no matter what our finances look like, no matter what our job situation look like, no matter what our stocks and bonds look like, no matter what any of that looks like, you are still God. And if we trust in you, there is nothing that we cannot do. There is nothing we can't reach. There are no mountains we can't move. There are no walls and doors that we can't kick down if we just trust in you. So right now, I pray this, Father, that for each and every person listening online or in this building, that as they hear this message, they receive an, a, 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 a revealing and an unveiling of the true them, of the true them, where they could say, I am going to be the true me, and that is letting Christ shine through me, and I can use my gifts and my talents to, to save souls, to, to bring people to Christ, to bring them into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Your kingdom, Father. Your kingdom and your will be done and not ours. Hallelujah. And I pray blessings and healings over each and every person who's watching this or each and every person in this building or any other person who decides to watch it later. They receive a mighty and powerful blessing, a wave. Let it just sweep right now. Hallelujah. I feel your spirit in this place and let it just sweep this place right now. Just a sweeping of healing and, and revealing and acknowledgement and, and, and just a, a uplifting, lift up depression right now. I take depression off of anyone who's been stuck in a depression. 
and have been wearing a mask like, everything's okay, I'm fine, no, I'm not depressed. They are going to unveil right now, hallelujah, that mask. Take it off so that you can work within the real them and, and, and bring to them the root and the source of that demonic depression so that they can rip it away. That they make a choice that, no, I'm not holding on to this no more. I'm letting it go because I have a choice and I'm choosing Christ. I'm choosing the Holy Spirit and I'm going to walk through whatever I need to walk through to get on the other side, to get to my blessings that I deserve. I will no longer operate in an uh, imposter uh, uh, syndrome. No, I deserve what God has for me and I'm going to get it. Hallelujah. By any means necessary, I'm going to get it. That means I'm going to let the Lord lead the way and not myself and not man and not my friends and anybody else. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Hallelujah. I pray that for each and every soul that's hearing this right now, hearing my voice right now, that they be blessed and receive it. Hallelujah. That they receive it. I feel healing taking place right now. I feel burdens being laid down right now. I feel the chains just woo, being ripped off right now. Ah, the shackles are coming off. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel the release. And I thank you, Father, for the release. And I thank you, Father, for the testimonies that we're going to receive from people saying, I made a decision that day to let it go and let God. I made a decision that day to be the real me. I made a decision that day to stop fronting and just be who God created me to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In your son's name, we thank you in advance, and we pray this. Amen. And one more thing before we get out of here. What I'd like to do, if there's anybody that's in this building who has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. If that's you, just raise your hands. Don't be embarrassed. There's a family here that wants to pray for you and welcome you into the family. Hallelujah. God's family. Not a clique, not a club, but God's family. Amen. Amen. If that's not you in this building, if that's you online, I want to pray for you. Just put a hand emoji or a prayer emoji in the, in the feed, and we want to pray for you. And the church, we're going to pray with you. Amen. Are you guys ready? If you're going to pray this prayer, we're going to welcome you into the family. Let's go. Dear Heavenly Father. I am a sinner in need of a Savior, and that Savior is your Son, Jesus Christ. So right now I repent of all of my sins, and I let you take full control from this day forward. In your Son's Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's clap. Give them praise for that. Thank you. If you said that prayer, get in touch with us. We want to help you along your journey. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys are dismissed. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that you were tremendously blessed and that you had an opportunity to grow closer to God through his son, Jesus. And we would also love to partner with you in prayer. If there is anything that we could assist you with regarding a prayer or something we can partner with you in your prayers, just send us an email to restorationchurchtalsa at gmail.com and we will join you in prayer. Until the next time we meet, God bless.